Are you going on a trip on an airplane and you're wondering which power bank can you take with you? We're gonna cover that in this video and we're gonna talk about one option and decide if it's any good for us today. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. I am about to go on a trip and have a problem. So normally I take this laptop right here and the battery lasts, if I'm lucky, three hours. Sometimes it'll last five hours but I can never guess when it's gonna last three and when it's gonna last five. And the flight that I'm gonna go on does not have in-flight entertainment. It does not have in-flight power because it's a budget airline. And that is where something like one of these is gonna come in because this will allow me to power my laptop through the entire flight and watch my own movies. I can use Netflix, just download it and I'm good to go. I don't need in-flight entertainment, especially when I save so much on the flight. But it can be a little confusing when you're looking at power banks. Which one can you use? Which one can't you use? And what do you do? I'm gonna try and clear that all up in this very video. Now, first off, I want to read the TSA rules on battery banks, okay? So there's two classifications of TSA guidelines for carry on batteries. Now, here is the deal. If you are using a battery bank, you're bringing a battery bank as your carry-on on your flight, it must be carry-on, okay? You can check it depending on the size, but in most cases, there's special instructions and special conditions required to put it in your bag. I'll explain why. Lithium batteries have a ton of energy. And when they light on fire, they burn fast, they burn hot, and they do not extinguish themselves. If you had a battery bank in your luggage, and for whatever reason it lit on fire, nobody would know until you had everyone's luggage on fire. And everyone's luggage on fire, when you're in the air in an airplane, would be a really bad situation to be in. So you don't want to put anyone in that circumstance, and you certainly don't want to be put into that situation. So for most of us, it is safest if you have your battery bank on the plane with you. If there was a problem, you would know about it quickly, and the stewardesses and stewards are trained specifically how to handle a lithium battery problem. This is a shout out to those Note 7 days when they were spontaneously lighting on fire. This is the same kind of issue. So they had to go through the training. They have special tools to actually try to contain a lithium battery fire. And that's what these are. So I'm not saying these are gonna light on fire, don't get me wrong, but the TSA wants to take extra special precautions to make sure that everyone is not in danger of dying, okay? So do not try to check your lithium battery. Now, size of the battery. You must have a battery that has 100 watt hours or less of potential power in the device. If it has less than 100 watt hours of total capacity, then you are good to go. It can be on your carry-on luggage, not your checked luggage, your carry-on luggage and you are limited to one. You cannot bring more than one. There's special circumstances where you can have more than one, but the total watt capacity has to be less than 100 total. So you could get one battery pack that has 100 watt hours of power or two smaller ones. Now, I would ask, why would you want two smaller ones when one full-sized one will actually charge your laptop and do everything that you want rather than trying to carry two separate ones? But there's reasons why you might want a smaller one. Just know 100 watt hours and you're good. Now there is a second class and that is lithium batteries with more than 100 watt hours. Now that would be 100 to 160 watt hours of lithium metal batteries. Now typically this is gonna be your larger laptops with larger capacities or for larger battery banks for specialized equipment like camera gear and stuff like that. The average consumer probably does not have a 101 to 160 watt hour battery bank and I would not suggest taking one. Now you can and with special permission you are allowed to have them on the plane. When are you granted the special permission? Generally speaking the planes are only allowed to have a total of a certain number of watt hours available on on the plane. If every single person brought a 100 watt hour lithium battery on the plane, you could have potential for a very large lithium fire. Now it's spread out across every seat, but it is a lot of potential there. Fortunately, not everyone brings a 100 watt hour battery bank on the plane with them. And so there's extra capacity available for one or two other guests to bring a bigger battery. And that's how they decide who can get it and who can't. Generally speaking, if you ask the airline, can I bring 
bring a bigger battery bank? They're gonna say no. And that's because it's just so much easier to say no. And since they can and do say no, why even risk it in the first place? Just get a battery bank that fits the restrictions and you don't have to ask permission. And today we have one such battery bank that we're going to review. In a different video, we already reviewed the BL63, so now we need to check out its big brother, the BL64. This is the Mac Daddy, the biggest one that you can get on a plane within the TSA restrictions. Let's check it out. It's got a little pull tab here just so that we pull on it the right way. It's got a case here, similar to our other guy. It's got a card, a quick start guide, welcome guide this one has a usb-c cord now this one's a little bit longer than the one that came with our other charger and that's that's okay it's neither here nor there but this one is almost a full 18 inches long now you may think that a short cable is a bad thing i'll show you why it's not a bad thing in a moment here but when we lift that up we've got the power bank now right off the bat i can tell i like something about this thing and that is the size of this thing is almost right this is my s24 ultra it is about the size of my s24 ultra it's just fatter so if i st stack it up on end it's as fat as two of my s24 ultras but you know as far as carrying this around i wouldn't think anything of this it's just a fat cell phone is is what it is now like the other one the build quality is really nice it's solid it's got kind of a matte finish but i can't scratch it like it's a durable matte finish so it's not gonna you know look really bad it's got a display screen on here if i tap the power button it's going to tell me we've got 46 percent power now i just pulled this out of the box it has not been charged yet so the fact that it's got any power at all is really great on the top here there's three ports so i have a USB-C in and out. Now it says up to 140 watts. That's gonna be important for me because I told you I want to charge my laptop, which will take up to 120 watts of power if I give it to it. So I will plug it in in a minute and see what it says. It also has a 45 watt out out and a 18 watt USB-A out. Those are out only. This one here is where you're gonna charge from and where you're going to discharge from for your higher powered devices. As with the review of this smaller brother of this, if you are traveling with this, you are going to have to prove that it meets the TSA guidelines. So we're gonna look on the back. We're looking for something printed here that says no more than 100 watts. And right here it says battery capacity, that's the important one, 27,000 milliamp hours. Now, if if you have more than 27,000 milliamps of power, they can turn you away. So I think the actual number is 27,500, but this one is well under that. Now it does also say 99.9 .9 watt hours of power. That's the important one, the 99.9. .9. You need to stay under the 100 watt hours to be TSA certified for air travel without special permission. So that's why I was saying this is the big one. This is the Mac Daddy. This is the one that is going to let you on the plane and power all of your devices. Now when I say all of your devices, what do I mean? How about a MacBook Air M1? You can charge it 1.4 times an iphone 15 you can charge 4.7 complete charges if you have a samsung galaxy s23 or s24 it's going to be able to charge that 4.2 times and those are my gaming friends you can recharge your steam deck two full times now we discovered it has three ports you can actually charge three devices from all three ports all at the same time so this might be the only battery bank that you need in fact i hope it is because you're only allowed one on the plane at a time as we already talked about so this one will have the power to charge my full laptop through the high port through the 140 watt port it can charge my cell phone through the 45 watt port and it could charge my earbuds or something else through the 18 watt port it also supports full charge pass through that means i can have this charging while plugged into a wall and be charging my cell phone this is especially important if you're at an airport where you don't have a lot of plugs available you can charge this up charge your cell phone up charge your laptop up and it all comes through this power bank while it's charging the power bank so you can get everything topped up before you get on that plane again give yourself the best chance at having full access to all of your devices 
when you don't have power on that airplane. Now this does have a smart display. When I push the button, it just says how much battery power I have. But if I get out my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and I plug that in, and then I plug this in, what it also does is tells me how much charging power I'm providing. So right now it's nothing, 16 watts. Now my phone's gonna take as much power as it can get. It is currently taking 30 watts of power and that's about all we're getting. It's settling out at about 30 watts. If I swipe down on my phone, it's saying that it's charging and it's gonna take about 49 minutes at the current rate until full. So it does support fast charging. Now my phone is at 40% right now, so it's looking for a lot of power. Now this thing also says there's 2.1 hours of battery life left at the current discharge rate. So I know it's at 46% and in two hours, or it, I know it can provide power like this for two hours, but my phone's gonna be charged in less than one hour. That means that with the current battery power that's here, I can recharge my phone at least two times before I run out of power on the phone. My phone will last many, many, many hours off of full charge. So I don't have to worry too much about that. Now that is through the high powered port. Because I'm only pulling 30 watts of power and it's even dropped to 20 now, I could plug it into the other port, the 45 watt port, and it should charge my phone at the exact same rate because my phone didn't take that much power. So now my phone's trying to pull about 20 amps of power. I'm at 28 watts of power now, 27 watts of power. And again, it's saying 2.3 watts. So my phone is charging just as fast through the slower port, but that means I can plug my laptop in, which is not fully powered. Now my laptop is currently at 90%, but this guy is saying that my laptop is pulling 40 watts. Oh, I plugged it in the wrong port. Let's put it in the big port here. Yeah, see how much power that pulls. And my laptop's going back and forth and saying, holy smokes, what have you plugged in now? Now it is still saying only about 90% available, which is fine. It, it's gonna you know, t take not as much power to do that last 90%, but I'm pulling 50 watts of power right now. And this is saying that it's only gonna be able to do this for another hour. Well, my laptop will be charged in an hour, no problem, but it's settling around 50 watts. Now this will provide up to 140 watts watts out of this port but to stick under the 100 watt hours it has to get really tricky with how exactly it does that because it can't give me 140 watts for a full hour that's where battery capacity comes into the discussion and all of that now the other thing is you could take this hiking you could recharge it through a solar panel it'll charge slow but you could pull out one of those flip out solar panels i've shown you guys the ecoflow power hat you could actually charge this thing with a power hat if you had lots of days over and over and over again with full sunshine. But there's tons of ways to charge this thing and it'll work for a long time. Now, if you do want one of these, you can get it directly from the Inui website for about $90. I will put a link in the description where you can grab that from yourself. That's a lot of information to digest all at once. So I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions about the Inui products that we reviewed today. It is available through their website. It's something that I've tested myself. I've checked out the other guys. I've had a look at what else is available. It's really hard to know who you can trust. Yes, there are cheaper ones available on Amazon, and I tried some of those. I could not with a clear conscience review those and tell you guys to get them because I started to find some anomalies in how they rated the battery to make it seem like it was TSA compliant when really it wasn't. And I don't want to risk anybody's life by telling you to take something on a plane that I just can't stand behind. So these products are very well built. They meet the specs that they say they will and they're high quality. And that's the biggest thing. Are you taking something safe? We, we don't want to risk anyone's life. I personally have tested these. I've ran it through the test with my own laptop, my own cell phone, and they work exactly as described. But I want to hear about your thoughts. Have you used this product before? Have you got a personal experience with it? Post in the comment down below. I'd love to hear your story or your questions. I try to answer all of them and let's keep the conversation going. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.